Today, we would like to tell you a funny joke about crime. In this funny joke, a crime has been committed, but we also get a very good indication of how crime is evolving. But first, we need to explain some basic history about crime, just to make you understand just how lucrative this form of behavior has become. Crime has gone through basically three phases in humankind. The early history of crime would suggest that early forms of crime were purely seen as personal transgressions. As there was no law enforcement to control these crimes, the communities managed these by using customs, religion, or the rule of the tribal leaders. The second part of history was the post-classical era. In the post-classical era, centralized governments were still non-existent so crime was still managed locally. This was done by towns, establishing their own criminal justice system. Towards the end of this era, for the first time in human history, common law, or the same law for everyone, was developed. This was introduced by King Henry II of England when he established traveling judges. These judges tried criminals by using previous rulings as a reference. This was the start of our modern legal system, and official crime data were first recorded by these judges. Now we come to our modern era, and in this era, the main changes from these previous eras is that we see crime as behaviors that affect societies, rather than indifferences between individuals. So, buckle up for today's joke. It's all about modern-day crime, but keep watching till after the punchline of the joke to see the moral of this story and how it ties in with modern-era crime and potentially the future of crime. So, these two buddies were playing a game of golf while chatting away about normal daily issues. Have I told you that my wife has been robbed? The first buddy said, Oh no, that's bad. The second buddy replied, What happened? She was driving with her car from the shopping mall when she stopped by the traffic lights. As it was very hot, both the vehicle's front windows were all the way down to allow for fresh air. She always had a bad habit of leaving her handbag on the front seat. A guy came to the side of the car, stuck his hand into the window and stole her handbag. Wow, that's bad the second buddy said. And did you have many losses? The first buddy said, well, my main issue is just with her credit card. Second buddy said, oh no, don't tell me they cleaned you out. Well, the first buddy said, now that I pay in detail attention to what's going on with my credit card, it has become more evident that the robber spend much less on my credit card than what my wife did. <laughs> So the moral of the story is, as time goes by and we make the history of the future, it is becoming more evident who the real criminals are. <laughs> if you liked this video, please watch our next video. Today I would like to tell you the greatest wife joke ever. But before we crack the code on that math equation, let me tell you a little history behind the joke. Dirty work? The real head scratcher is sexual services for financial or other reward between consenting adults has existed from pre-colonial to modern times. Dirty work during colonialism was often linked to migration as the colonial economy grew, and as 20th century war efforts developed, male migrants were drawn to urban towns, military settlements, and mining camps, which increased opportunities for women to engage in dirty work as a form of opportunity to support their families. In response of these activities, 
a dirty worker rights movement emerged in the 1990s and has spread throughout the world. Now that we have the story behind the joke, buckle up, things are about to get spicy. So, this guy went to the doctor to ask the doctor for some advice. Doctor, he said, I have a problem with my wife. For the past six months, she did not want to make love to me. And as we are not that old yet, I must assume something is wrong. And I would want to know from you what we can do about it. The doctor asked the husband if he can send the wife to visit him to see what the prognosis is. So, after the doctor did a full examination on the wife and established that there is no physical problem with her, he asked bluntly why the wife don't want to make love with her husband anymore. The wife started by saying, that money is a big problem within their household and that they battle to pay their bills. Because of this, both are forced to work every day. Now, doctor, she said, I take the taxi to work. And normally when the taxi driver is some distance from the house, he asks me, with his beard practically twitching with anticipation, if I am going to pay up or what? Me? Empty pockets, flatter than a mime pretending to walk a tightrope. I am forced to choose the, or what? Now this taxi trip normally led me to be late for work, looking like a raccoon that have escaped a mascara factory. There's my boss, face like a thundercloud. You are late for work again, must I fire you? Or what? Easy choice, right? Can't risk the pink slip. And as I have explained to you before, that money is tight and that I cannot afford to lose my job. I am obviously forced then to choose the, or what? Now, doctor, obviously my energy levels are very low at lunchtime, so I need some food to get me through the day. I will then go to the cafeteria at work and the chef, knowing me very well by now, then normally approach me to say, anything on the menu is yours, but I first need to know whether you are going to pay or what. So, I have no alternative then to choose the or what. Then after work, I take the taxi home. And as you know by now, the taxi driver know that I cannot afford the trip. So I am forced to again choose the or what. So doctor, when I get home after a long day at work, I am too drained to even pet the goldfish without needing a nap. My loving husband would obviously like to make love to me, but I cannot explain to him my situation and always just respond that I am just too tired for this. The doctor said, ma'am, I know exactly how you must feel and understand your situation clearly now. So my question to you is this, are we going to tell your husband about all of this or what? So, the moral of the story is this. If you are a financial stud, you will never have to worry about, or what. <laughs> if you like our jokes, please watch our next joke. As part of our greatest jokes ever, we bring you a joke about getting older. Before we start with the joke, let us tell you about the history behind the joke. We all want to stay young, right? Ah, the eternal quest for youth. We all want to stay vibrant, like a perfectly sun-kissed grape, not a raisin. But who wants to rewind all the way back to babyhood? Diapers are cute on puppies. Not so much on, well, you get the picture. What we know about old age is that the oldest verified person ever was a French lady who lived to 122 years and 164 days. The oldest verified man ever was a Japanese gentleman who lived to the age of 116 years and 54 days. Aging is a natural process 
But if we can solve the basic process of aging, what will we look like? And how will we change? In today's joke, we will pursue this avenue. So buckle up. We're about to fly through time like wrinkle cream on a wrinkly day. This girl aced her final high school exams, harder than a squirrel cracking a safe with a walnut, or like an invitation to her own Nobel Prize ceremony. Her parents blessed their cotton socks, cheered her on while secretly hoarding ramen, and praying their retirement plan didn't involve living at the zoo for her to go to the best university in America. Three years later, the phone exploded with the daughter's jigglewatt glee. Turns out, university wasn't just for overpriced ramen and existential dread. She'd aced her first degree. Now, to repay the parental loan that resembled a small island nation's GDP, it was guinea pig time. Brace yourselves. Science is about to get interesting. One sip, she promised and you'll be back in diapers faster than you can say bibs. You will get younger and younger, her formula promised. Her parents looked at each other, a mischievous glint in their eyes. Challenge accepted, but only drink one teaspoon per day, said the daughter to her parents. Six months later, the daughter went home to visit her parents. Her eyes bugged out like a cartoon character who just saw a tax bill. When she saw her mother, her mother was as young as a woman that just welcomed herself to dirty 20s, never mind the 30s. She's got that, would make Shakira jealous body and a laugh that could cure a hangover. The daughter couldn't predict if it was her mother's looks or the fact that she had a baby on her back that shocked her the most. With a short-circuited brain out of shock, the daughter said, Hi, Mom, but you have gotten young. You look fabulous. Where is Dad? The mother answered, Well, that is the weirdest story. The third night that he drank your medicine, he has gotten so sour that I have gotten younger, faster than him, that he drank that whole bottle of age to young, one time, done. Oh no, mom, but where is dad now? The mom answered, the bastard is on my back. <laughs> the moral of the story is this, careful what you wish for, as you might just exchange your wrinkles for a diaper. If you like our jokes, please watch our next joke. Here is some farmer comedy to make your day. This old farmer was a cattle farmer from the district and used to his old ways of farming. One day while in town, he bumped into the neighboring farmer who also happened to be a cattle farmer. So how is farming on your side? The neighbor asked. Well, said the farmer, I had huge problems with my herd of cattle. It was not growing because my bull was not doing his job with the cows. But he is okay now. Oh, said the neighbor, and what did you do? Well, said the farmer, I went to the vet to get some advice because it could not go on like this anymore. And what did the vet do to help you? The neighbor asked. Well, he gave me a bottle of medicine, which I had to give the bull three times a day for a week. And did it work? The neighbor asked. Oh yes, the farmer said. Immediately after giving the first batch of medicine, the bull started doing his job. It worked so well that I think he is much busier now amongst the cows than he was when he was still a young bull. Wow, the neighbor replied. That's truly wonderful. What is this medicine called? Perhaps I can introduce it to my bull as well. 
Well, the farmer said, the bottle lost its label, so I don't know what the medicine is called. What I can tell you, though, is that it? Tastes like peppermint. <laughs> if you like this joke, please keep watching our next joke. So this single man and woman took an overnight train trip and were booked into the same compartment for the evening. Uncomfortable as it was for the two of them, it became very cold that evening. The heater in the compartment was not working, and it was going to be a long evening. After putting on all of the blankets available to them, they were still very, very cold. The man was sleeping on the top bunk and the woman at the bottom. In the middle of the night, the guy said to the woman, I am very, very cold. Would you mind pass me my jacket so that I can throw it over me as well? The woman said to the man, we are alone in here and no one will ever know. So why don't we just for this evening make like we are husband and wife? Now, obviously, the man liked that idea a lot. He quickly responded by saying, now that's a great idea. The woman then said, since we are husband and wife, I would suggest you come down here and get your own bloody jacket. The man slowly turned around and farted. In our greatest jokes ever, it was just a matter of time until little Johnny got his turn. Now, as far as the history of jokes go, we have a bit of a history lesson for you today. Many countries have generated through recent history a following of jokes or mimes about a naughty little boy. Naughty as hell, asking stupid questions, and many times just plainly being in the way now the best known globally of all these very naughty children characters, of which we make jokes, obviously, is Little Johnny. Today, we dive into Little Johnny's aquatic nightmares. See, back in the good old days, learning to swim wasn't exactly sunshine and pool noodles. No, it was more like sink, or sink fast. Our Little Johnny was born with only one leg and one arm. What he missed in body parts, though, were more than made up with, having a heart of a lion. Now, buckle up, because as we plunge into little Johnny's aquatic adventures, be prepared for laughs, gasps, and a lot of gurgling. Dive in. It's going to be a wild ride. Little Johnny just started school and was enthusiastic about everything. He dreamed of slicing through the chlorinated waves, like a dolphin in sequins, but life was like a stubborn pool filter, always spitting out obstacles. Born with only this one leg and one arm, he looked less of an Olympic hopeful. The bigwigs at the swimming gala weren't playing around the prospect of little Johnny joining any of the races. Spectator and cheerer, they decreed, their voices as dry as chlorine tablets. But remember, our little Johnny's had the heart of a lion and won't take no for an answer. One day, the legend of the swimming pool, Timmy Turner caught a case of the sniffles that made him sound like a foghorn, auditioning for a pirate musical. This was the day that destiny finally intervened for little Johnny. He will get his turn to race in the gala, sink or swim. Little Johnny, contorting himself like a human pretzel, paddling backwards with all the finesse of a toddler, trying to pet a giraffe. The other swimmers give him pitying glances until he somehow starts gaining ground. By the finish, 
Little Johnny doing a victory backstroke dance. Water spraying from his hair like a malfunctioning geyser. The crowd erupts, jaws hanging on the floor. With that, our Little Johnny set new school records and won every event of the day. The teacher obviously wanted to know where he learned to swim that well. And Little Johnny replied, one day his dad took him with the boat to the middle of the lake and threw him into the water and left. Little Johnny had to swim to the side of the lake. Oh, you poor thing. That is terrible. You could have drowned, said the teacher. No, not at all, Johnny replied. Swimming came easy for me. I swam like a fish in water, but the most difficult part of learning to swim that day was first. To get out of that bag my dad put me in when he threw me into the water. <laughs> if you like our jokes, please watch our next joke by clicking here. <laughs>